part three of our Iona vlog diary series and we're in the Netherlands all of today and all of tomorrow. There's so much to see, from markets to mills, houses to harbours and Santas to what on earth is he holding? If you don't know us, I'm Rachel, he's Wills and we are Postcard and a Pint. So stay tuned for fun and frolics and the most disgusting cocktail we've ever tried courtesy of Nicole Scherzinger. Isn't that right, Nicole? Absolutely not. We've got a lot to fit in, so let's get going. And tell us where we are. Morning. Morning. We're in Rotterdam. Yes, the Iona has washed up in Rotterdam. So let's get some Eggs Benedict, coffee, toast and a full English downers. Now, don't take that literally, Rach. Too late. So at 9.30am, I was on my second jumper and it was time to explore Rotterdam. The terminal was really easy to navigate. And how's the weather looking? It's inclement weather, but we've got two full days to explore. Let's go see what we can find. Let's do this. When you get off the ship, the tourist office have set up a little stand there. They don't give out paper maps. They encourage you to... But there was to, a very helpful map. Yeah, scan a QR code. And they've got a map on the table and he showed us where everything is. Um, he reckons it's two miles. Ah, furthest. we'll do it in one. We'll do it in one. So we're off to try and find the cube houses and the market. Ooh. Yes, the weather was dreadful. The clouds were so low you couldn't see the tops of the skyscrapers and the Euromast wasn't visible at all. But this won't stop us. Across the Erasmus Bridge we go. This was a very pleasant walk and gave us some great views of Iona as we went. We'll be catching you tomorrow, chaps. The great thing about Rotterdam is that the ship docks pretty much in town and it's an easy walk to the centre. Oh look, there's a metro stop, but we ignored it, we'd seen boats. This is the Maritime Museum, only about a 20 minute walk from the ship. The harbour at the museum houses lots of old boats, steam tugs and even a working grain elevator. We didn't stop here today, we were off to find some cubes and on the way found this. There was something so horrifying, yet powerful, about this statue. This statue is called the Destroyed City. It was unveiled in 1953. It's a bronze statue and it commemorates the bombing of Rotterdam, which happened on the 14th of May in 1940. The heart of Rotterdam was almost completely destroyed by the Luftwaffe in World War II. This statue sees a figure with its head thrown back as if crying in grief. There is a hole where the heart should be symbolising the destruction of Rotterdam. We were fascinated, and the weather made it all the more sinister. Now where are these cube houses? We've heard they're bright yellow, and you can't miss them. There are some bikes, and look, is that another metro station? Are you two paying attention? Nope, you've seen cuby houses, and you don't give a monkeys about the metro. Let's hope your lack of interest in it doesn't come back to bite you on the bum later. Go on then, cube houses. We're now at the cube houses in Rotterdam and I've always wanted to see these. They were designed by Piet Blom and they're mental, they're like cubes interlocked together and our houses, we're going to go in one in a minute, which I can't wait. But can you imagine coming home from the pub, slightly squiffy and you lived in one of these, you'd be like, can I have a tin opener please to get into my house? Crazy. So if you've ever wondered what it would be like to live inside a Rubik's Cube, for three euros you can find out. The living quarters are over three floors. Once you've climbed the entrance stairs, you find yourself in a living room and open kitchen. On the next floor, there are two bedrooms and a bathroom and a whole host of glass animals and movie figures. Then right at the top, there's another room sometimes used as a garden. Are you enjoying it? They're great fun, but we wouldn't want to live in one. They're based on the concept of living as an urban roof, as they are the roof of the shops below. And if you stand in the right place, you can see a star. Directly over the road from the cube houses is a metro station you've not noticed, but also Rotterdam's Market Hall. It's a huge modern building we've heard so much about. So, welcome to the Market Hall in Rotterdam. Let's take a look. This Market Hall is such an amazing use of space. It houses residential accommodation, offices, a four-storey underground car park, and of course, the market with foods from across the globe. Do make sure you're hungry. The ceiling inside is an 11,000 meter squared artwork by Arno Koonen and Iris Roskam called the Horn of Plenty. It shows huge fruit and vegetables and seeds and insects. And each window is a window from a residence looking down onto the market. 
I think you'd be constantly hungry if you lived here, but wouldn't have to go far for some quality takeout. We loved these cheeses and bought a few for gifts. There certainly were some interesting flavours on offer. We gave the beer cheese to Wills's dad. What to try? There's so much choice, but we feel it should be something Dutch as we are in the Netherlands. Now these smell good and we believe are a traditional Dutch snack. Go on my son, show us how they're made. Because uh, we and most people use only this side, so this one is different. These are puffages, a traditional Dutch treat. They're mini pancakes made with yeast and buckwheat flour. How are they? This is our first go at puffages, little tiny Dutch pancakes. Sorry if I've said that wrong, but let's give them a go. Oh. Mmm, <laughs> they're good. Here we go. Mmm, mmm, God, I'm gonna set. Go. Mmm, mmm. So, as Rachel said, they are like little pancakes. It tastes exactly like pancakes, but they've got a butter on, real butter on them, and a load of ice and sugar. And they're very nice. Very unhealthy, but very nice. We could have stayed at the market for ages. But we've Rotterdam to see. Where are you off to now then? Next we're off to Williamsburg to check out an old harbour area. And how's the weather doing? As in usual postcard in the pine style, it's pouring down! Hey! It was a quick stroll around the old port. It sits right at the back of the cube houses and is very picturesque. Just imagine this on a sunny day. Yes, now I know we'd had a go at puffages, but that was just a snack and we've been walking all morning, so that makes it lunchtime. This looks just the place. And nachos are top of the bill. We'll take those please and a couple of beers. We've stopped in this lovely little box. It's a bit damp outside. I've gone for the Affligem Blonde beer and Rachel's gone for the Bir Moretti. Cheers. Cheers indeed. They were excellent nachos and have made it onto our top 10 nachos around the world list. We highly recommend Cade 4 in the Old Port in Rotterdam. So what's next? Didn't you say something about a bridge? So not only were those amazing nachos, we also came to find, as we said, the Williams Bridge. We found that. That is over there. Now that's not that interesting to us. It's just a newer bridge that replaced an older one. But we found the Witterhuis or the White House. Now that, built in 1898, is Europe's oldest skyscraper. To think that this was once a daringly high building here in Rotterdam. But right now we're moving on as we have a date with Santa. To find Santa we've got to go back to the destroyed city statue, keep going, turn right, we'll see you there. Now we could have taken the metro we just walked past, but Wills would walk a million miles barefoot to see his hero. Nearly there. Oh, I think he's supposed to be holding a Christmas tree. But as you can see, it looks like Santa is holding a butter plug. Mrs. Claus is up for a good time tonight. He was made for the International Sculpture Convention in 2001. He was intended to sit outside the city's concert hall. But you can't go and take in the Philharmonic, so to speak, with that outside. Yes, whatever angle you take in the poor sod, his Christmas tree looks like a butt plug. There are even decoration butt plugs hanging in the streets. How very festive. Right, that's enough of that. Moving on, but not using that. Or that as a mode of transport. What's happening? Well, that was fun. Next up, it's off to Delfhaven, which is the old port town that didn't get bombed in the war. Reckons it's about a 25 minute walk. Let's go. Now you know all of those metro stations we've been walking past. You know, the ones with the big M on them. About now is probably when we regretted not noticing them. You walk, kids. Oh, look, seats. How's it going? It's a long way this. We seem to be walking for ages. Our feet are killing. We've still got nine minutes walking left. Better be worth it. We passed some pretty parkland. Yet another stone sofa. And on we walked. Soaked. And map spatters out here. That doesn't look like a harbour. Methinks it's time for a drink break. We've just stopped for a few minutes for a wee break and a drink stop and then we've discovered there is a really pretty marina so we're going to go and find that in a minute, hopefully. This is Café the Library at Matanessa Pline. I had to take my shoes off while I had my pop. 
It was a lovely place and we were soon ready to go again. We've regrouped, we've refreshed a very, very nice lady and the library cafe has told us the way to go and then we are going to get the subway home. Oh, well done. The nice ladies taught you about the metro. We've gone over the bridge, we're going down the steps, we'll go, whoa, <laughs> falling down the steps. And we shouldn't walk and talk. And we shouldn't walk and talk and we're going to walk along the river, hopefully. And then after about another 10 minute walk, things started to look old and we'd found Delft's Haven. This area is so beautiful and managed to escape the bombing of 1940. We were so drenched and shattered by now, it was time to find ourselves an old pub to unwind in. And try some local beer, of course. We've stopped off in the Pilgrim, which is a beautiful historical building. Rachel will tell you a bit of history about it now. But we've stopped for a beer, we've stopped for the Speedwell, which is named after one of the boats that came from here. We might try the Mayflower before we go to know yet, but cheers. On August the 1st, 1620, the Pilgrim Fathers left Delft's Harbour with the Speedwell, bound for England. Here, they would join the Mayflower and set sail to the New World, or the USA as it's called today. The church is still known as Pilgrim Fathers Church today, and our pub, the Pilgrim. Beer review, please. Okay, so a review on the beer. We are having Speedwell beer, as we all said. I'm not much of a lager person. It's a little bit fruity for me. I guess if it was a beautiful hot day, you sit and drink it outside, it would be absolutely stunning. It's very nice, don't get me wrong, but it's not a rainy day beer. The beers here are all named after the Pilgrim ships. Right, now we're on the Mayflower. I think I actually do prefer this. It's a bit stronger, but it does taste a little bit minty, but that might just be after the fruitiness of the other one. But it's nice. Cheers. So my review on the Speedwell, yeah, Rachel was right. It was a bit fruity. I think it was a pale ale. And the Mayflower that we're on now is more of a blonde. It's very nice, actually. I think I prefer this one out of the two. Definitely. We were then talked into some bitter ballon. My first bitter ballon. <laughs> Mmm, very tasty, probably not very healthy, but very tasty. A traditional Dutch meat-based snack, over to Will's. My first bit of ballon. Mm. Oh. It's not how I expected it to be. It's very gooey inside. The mustard's nice. Oh, it's good. Fried breadcrumbs on the outside. Mm. Yeah, it's nice. Anything else to add? Can I just say how hardcore are we? This Mayflower is 7.8%. Rock on. Definitely call into the Pilgrim if you're in Delft's Harbour. The girl serving was amazing. So proud of the history of the pub and the port. Did you enjoy yourself? We've had a lovely beer and bitter balance stop here in Pilgrim. And we're just going to make our way to the Metro. See if we can get on that way. Thankfully, just a five minutes walk away, there was a metro stop. I can see the M sign. McDonald's, brilliant! No, the metro, idiot. The metro in Rotterdam is excellent. We failed on the ticket machines and ended up just tapping our bank cards. It cost us £1.60 each to get back to the ship. It's a lot less complex a map than London, and the stop you want for the cruise terminal is Wilhelmina Plain on the D or E lines. We made a cheeky change at Burr's and... So far, so good. The metro was very clean and very efficient, and before we knew it, we were at our stop. From now on, we'll be traversing Rotterdam like this. It's just a short hop across the road, and there she is. Hello, Iona. It's been a long old day. Right, you two need to get showered and, more importantly, dry. Go on. We're dry, and we're off to go and see a bonus bit of entertainment. Cain and Abel, come with us. These guys are brothers and magicians, and they were good, but once again the show just felt a bit flat. Then we called by the Sky Dome for a bit of tribu. As always, this was visually stunning, and we did like the music for this one. Then, to complete our night's entertainment, we saw Rory O'Hanlon, a comedian in the clubhouse. So give us a shout if you're from England, actually. And Welsh people. I think they're multiplying on the ship. 
They just can't stop Welsh people, can they? We thought he was fantastic, but top of the bill this evening was definitely the skyline of Rotterdam at night. Enjoy. It had been a long old day, but what a brilliant one. It was now time for bed, and when we got back to our cabin, P&O had left us a rose as it was Valentine's Day. Night night! Morning. Morning! It's day two in Rotterdam and we're off to Kinderdijk to try and find some windmills. OK, so the clouds are still low and we're walking again, but it's just to the other side of the Erasmus Bridge and it's not raining. Bonus! Directly opposite the cruise terminal, on the other side of the river, is where you can catch a water bus to any number of destinations. We believe you can buy tickets online, but we decided to pay on board today. The fella at the tourist table in the cruise terminal had given us the times of the buses yesterday. Cheers, fella! Bang on time! All aboard for a leisurely sail along the Mars. We don't know how busy this gets in the summer, but today, on a not quite rainy day, there was plenty of room. We enjoyed picking out some of the things we'd seen yesterday. Now I know it's rained a lot this cruise, but there's no need for Noah's Ark, surely? Do Google this and check out its story, it's fascinating! To the windmills! After 30 minutes of sailing, it was time to disembark. Now where are these windmills? Go on, make it nice and easy for the Brits. Thank you! Yes, they're directly over the road from where the water bus drops you off. This is now the more modern method of pumping water off the land. Very industrial, but once this was all done via windmill and has left behind this. We've made it to Kinderdijk, one of the most famous Dutch tourist hotspots, and this is the largest concentration of old windmills in the Netherlands. There is something so peaceful and serene about this site. It's a beautiful place to walk and take in everything around you. The legend of Kinderdijk is such a sad yet uplifting story. In 1421, the flooding in this area was so bad, it swept away the dikes protecting the polder and thousands of people drowned. Once the floods subsided and the people left their homes to inspect the damage, they saw a cradle bobbing up and down on the water with a baby inside. The cradle was being kept afloat by a cat jumping up and down on it to stop it from sinking. The baby was saved and this maybe is where the word Kinderdike or Children's Dike comes from. If you want to get away from the hustle and bustle of the city, highly recommend this. It's really peaceful, it's tranquil and we're really enjoying the walk. It's beautiful and teeming with nature. If you like bird watching, not that kind of bird watching. If you're into nature and you like all different varieties of birds, this is the place to come. We've seen loads. The 19 stone windmills of Kinderdijk were built around 1740, but this one, the Blockveer Mill, is from 1630. This mill is now a museum, so you can experience what life was like in the 1950s. And I hope the cat that lives here now is a descendant of the cat who saved the baby all those years ago. Sadly, with it being February, everything was closed, but it hadn't spoiled our visit. Back to the water bus we went. Still empty, as you can see. We then chugged our way back to Rotterdam. Hello, Iona. Have you missed us? She looks like she has, but we're not going back now. Oh no, the sun. Yes, I repeat, the sun appears to be coming out. Let's explore more Rotterdam. By Metro, of course. Today we wanted to find the Town Hall and Central Station, so it was a quick zip up the E-Line. Our feet are preferring today already. This City Hall was begun in 1914, and miraculously it escaped the bombing of 1940. We went inside for a nose around. It was very pretty. We particularly liked the courtyard gardens and all the statues. 
surely it's almost lunchtime and you'll need to find somewhere to eat in Rotterdam. So a complete turn up for the Rotterdam books. The sun is now out and we're now sat outside for our lunch. Fabulous. Ah, Rotterdam, three seasons in two days. Let's make that four with a trip to the ski hut for some veggie burger, beef burger and a little bit of après ski. Nicely filled, we wandered down one of the main streets to find the station. War burger? No, cook it please. We took a shortcut through Central Plaza. It was bright and full of balls. Just around the corner, we found Central Station. This new modern station opened in 2014 and receives about 112,000 passengers per day. That's a lot of passengers. We don't know who she is, but she should cheer up. The sun's out and the tennis is on. And we're back on the metro, the only way to travel in Rotterdam. So what's next on the agenda, Rach? We're almost done in Rotterdam. We're off to see the Bobbing Forest and then the New York Hotel, and then we're done. So both of these are really close to the ship. First up, the Bobbing... Uh... Rotterdam failed. The phone claims the Bobbing Forest is here. I don't think the Bobbing Forest is bobbing at the moment. Or will be bobbing anytime soon by the looks of it. But these cool houses are bobbing. Just at the end of the headland or road where your ship docks is this lovely building, Hotel New York. Some history please, Rach. Behind me is the New York Hotel and this is another building that survived the bombings of World War II. This used to be the offices of the Holland America passenger line. This is where you'd sail away to the new world. A gateway to the new world, some would say. One last bit of info. If you want to catch a water taxi to pretty much anywhere in Rotterdam, the taxi rank is here too. We believe there's an app you can download and you can pretty much hail them like Ubers. What a brilliant two days we've had here, but now it's back to our girl and time to lose sight of the shore once again. Dinner tonight shall be served at the Opal restaurant on deck six, where we'll indulge in some crabs, salad, salmon, steak, and a good slab of cheesecake and ice cream for afters. Lovely. Ooh, this looks interesting. This is a new experience on the Iona. It's called Shh and is a multi-sensory experience where you can let go and surrender to the night spell, apparently. And Nicole Scherzinger, you know, the pussycat doll, is the creative force behind it. It even comes with its own signature cocktail that's only available during the experience. We'll be giving that a go. And your verdict? Oh, that's not good. Nicole, have you actually tasted this? Absolutely not. Well, you should. It tastes like a second-hand tea bag dipped in chilli juice. And whoever told you this was decadent and sexy was lying. Let's see what Wills thinks. You see, he doesn't like it either. What do you say to that? Your mind nuggets? Well, my bum nuggets after tasting that monstrosity. So the moral of the story is, boys and girls, save yourself £9 and order something palatable. Thanks, Nicole. Right, Wills, discounting the drink, how's the experience going? Update so far, it's 10 to 10 and nothing's really happened. We had a little bit of a dance break at that fast time. We thought that was the start of the show. It obviously wasn't, it was a bit of a free show. We've got some of the cast down there dancing, but not really interacting with the kids or with anyone, to be honest. It's just a bit confusing. No one really knows what's happening. There's a lot of confused looking faces. Anyway, I'll keep you updated. Cheers, news anchor Wills. We did see what they were trying to achieve. Sadly, they missed by a mile. It was all just a bit disjointed. Have you finished your cocktail, Wills? I'm still battling away, it's 10 past 10. Interestingly, lots of people are leaving. There's a lot more empty spaces now. It doesn't really know what it is, but we'll keep you updated. Stay tuned to the end of this vlog for a full review. And if you're watching p &O, we'll give you our ideas on how we'd fix this evening. Wills? It's now 25 to 11 and the place is literally half full. Yep, p &O, you missed the mark with this one. It's 5 to 11 and we've no idea if the show's finished or not. It's, well, we'll tell you what it's like. Nearly finished. Rachel's nowhere near finished. But I do need this to get rid of the taste. So a minging cocktail, a very disjointed evening and an empty venue. What do you say, Rach? Nah, you can keep that. It's such a shame as the concept isn't a bad one, but... It's 11 o'clock, this is going on till 12, we've had enough, we're going back to the room. Cheers! 
Although the evening wasn't great, we'd still enjoyed what we'd seen. And as the theatre types, we are discussing how we'd fix it. Four, three, two, one, round up. And here we are, and I know what you're thinking. You're not on the ship. We were on the ship. We did record this on the ship, but we've had a major technical fail. Yeah, the, the audio on the GoPro didn't record for nope. the last day at all. No, next week's vlog is going to be very interesting as we attempt to make a vlog with all our talking bits with no sound. Yeah. Our levels of creativity will find a new high. We did have oh, sound on the phone clips. We did have sound on the phone so clips. So we might be so, all right. <sighs> wish us luck, because that's next week. Anyway, Rotterdam, what do you think? I, I, you know what? Yeah. It was probably the port. I wasn't particularly bothered about it was new architecture. I like old, mm. but um, really enjoyed it. I'd definitely go again. Yeah. I think my favourite part of it I was probably sitting in that pub, to be yeah. honest, and it was it called Delft Haven. Yeah, it had such a great feel, Rotterdam. Totally different to Amsterdam. Yeah. Totally different to Amsterdam. Loved it. I believe you liked Santa Claus. <laughs> That's what Santa Claus should be holding. Yeah. A pint glass, not a butt plug. <laughs> It was fun. It was really funny. Now, on to that sh sh show. Sh oh, my word. Bless their hearts. Um, I think what they're trying to do is give the Sky, Sky Dome, it's called, isn't it? The Sky Dome a kind of exclusive ibiza -y type nightclub. It was a theme night rather than a show. experience. Yeah. But what but. they didn't factor in is who their audience are. Their audience are British people on a mm. P&O cruise. So had they done that in Abitha, it would probably would have worked. But British people can cope with the silent disco. They just didn't know what to do. That, I think that was yeah. one of the problems. It didn't say what it was. No. It was a bit of sort of mystery surrounding it. But and no it one just explained said, it. Shh. No one, people turned up <laughs> yeah. and nothing was happening. And people thought, is the show going to start? Yeah. And the dance started and everyone thought, oh, the show is starting. And then they stopped. Ugh. We thought, oh. And then every so often... They would have a, a, a strange version of Bjork's Oh So Quiet. Yeah. And then... Nothing would happen. Nothing would happen. <laughs> and then they get up and do a bit of a dance and a bit of an air. If they, don't get me wrong, those little dancey bits were great. They were the best choreography those dancers did. Mm. And it was the best reception the dancers got because all the lifts and lights were stripped away from them and they were just raw and um, on that stage on the pool and it was really great. It was good. What they were doing was good. It was it just was, the overall thing yeah. was a bit disjointed and as we said on the video didn't quite know what it no. was. So here is our fix. You can have this P&O for free. Our director heads on. If that was me and I was sent in as a choreographer to, to sort that out, what I would do is get one of the headliner showcast singers or two of them, a boy and a girl, and set up a DJ booth mm. on the stage and in between all the bits, have something written so that that person was telling people to get up and dance. Because those poor dancers were just dancing away in these roped areas. They weren't trained into, like, getting people up. No. And people weren't getting up. Basically, the, the whole night relied on people being drunk enough to get up and dance. And but, it was interesting yeah. as well because it, it was packed when we first yeah. got there. We got there a little bit early. It was heaving. You couldn't yeah. get... Well, we, we did just about manage to get a seat. Yeah. But by within an hour, yeah. cause it, it was half empty or I half full. British people need to be given permission to do something, and it's very multi-generational on uh, the Iona as well. Had someone said, yeah, get up and dance, and yeah. I'm playing this track and that track, and yeah. let's hear it for... Just write a script, give it to a singer, get them to sort of just bind the evening together, and it probably would just be... Just needed a bit of direction, yeah, didn't it? It needed some direction. A great night. I'll tell you what did need direction. That cocktail... Oh, oh my god! I kind of quite liked it in a, no, in a not didn't. liking it sort of way. It was horrible. It was horrible. What was it? It was aperol in it. We're gonna. We're actually gonna do okay. a full video about yeah. the shh. But there was aperol. There was passion fruit juice or liqueur. Was it tequila. No, there was tequila. Yeah. There was Tabasco sauce. Round the edges was the sweet and sour yeah. thing that they do. But the the, the chili they and the put lime. In a live chili. A live chili. But with the seeds in. If you put a chili in anything and leave the seeds in, within three seconds, all it tastes in your glass is chili. I kind of quite liked it because as the ice was melting, it was diluting it a little bit. Yeah, there was and kind of I was an determined to finish it. I didn't. There was an aftertaste of passion fruit. It was absolutely rank. If P&O wanted to do better on that evening, make a nice drink. You know what I was a little yeah. bit disappointed <laughs> with with the with the, um, with the cocktail? Was that they didn't make it there and then. They'd obviously yeah. made it en masse. And they had one of those little dispensers, the squirty, like like you do with pop. Yeah. And that was a bit disappointing. But the chilli was live. The chilli was live. <laughs> yeah, it was indeed. So we are going to round this up oh. here. So but hang on, before we do oh. that, don't forget to watch next don't week. Don't forget to... Well, who we'll knows? Make a video. We're going to make some creative 
Masterpiece. But we're going to go to Bruges. <laughs> we're going to... But we're going to go to Zabruga, which is yeah, the port for Bruges, and it was fab. We loved Bruges. it. It was ace. Absolutely loved it. Yeah. So if you'd like this video, that would be great. If you'd drop us a comment. Yeah, do all of that. Hit the like, hit the, the, the you, subscribe. You know what we're doing. You know what we're doing. We've got patrons, we've got all of that. Leave yeah. us a comment. Yeah. We love, love the comments. And we always answer them, by the way. We do. Answer every comment. We do indeed. And as we say... In postcard and the pint, cheers, cheers to, to the, the good, good times. Go for tea. Two windmills talking, one says to the other, what kind of music are you into? The other one says, I'm a big metal fan. Oh.